Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, uh, we had a good break. Let's uh, resume from where we left off. <coughs> Is that fine? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so we went through uh, chapter 19, which is talking about the sacraments of the church. We looked at two, sa two different sacraments, water baptism and the Lord's table. Yeah. Uh, one, one point that I want to make regarding the requirements of it, and it's at the bottom of page 125 in your PDFs. Um, it's towards the end, just before reflection. Um, it says, there is no explicit instruction in the scripture that you must be water baptized before partaking of the Lord's table. OK. Um, um, it's an really important point, because uh, a lot of we we as the pastoral team, we constantly receive emails. Uh, about this one one of the things about this thing is that uh, I know this person is not water baptized but they were partaking of the communion uh, why why are you allowing some questions are polite some emails are polite some emails are not very polite uh, right um, and so our, our response is this point is that uh, nowhere in the scripture it says that you have to be water baptized to be to partake of the Lord's table, right? And so this is what we follow at All People's Church. We keep participation of the Lord's table to it's open to all born again believers, right? We now we make that announcement. We say, okay, if you believe Jesus as uh, as your Lord and Savior, um, you are welcome to partake of the Lord's table. It's as simple as that. Um, so there are churches that says, uh, I mean, it's. That, that follows that only if you're water baptized you have to partake of it and uh, there are more churches that would say that if you're it's not enough that if you're water baptized only if you're the member of this church you can uh, uh, partake of the lord's table so there are all these uh, practices that's being followed by different churches but um, at all people's church this is what we follow um, as long as you've uh, confessed with your mouth and you know, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, uh, you are welcome to partake of the Lord's table. Okay. Um, now, another important point in that same page, in page 125 on top, it says the elements of bread and grape juice are symbolic. That means we do not believe in transmutation. So what's that uh, crazy word? It's, that means we don't take it literally. Okay, so that's why people in John chapter 6 were offended because uh, they were like, okay, what are you talking about? Transmutation here is like a literal thing, uh, but it's symbolic of what it represents, right? It's the elements um, that I just prayed over, blessed over, and we partake of it as commanded. Okay, so those are the two points that I just wanted to conclude with. Let's move on to chapter 20. Um, church discipline. And uh, resolving conflicts. Yep. Uh, resolving conflicts. Who likes conflicts? <laughs> you like to resolve conflicts or to start one conflict? <laughs> I want to start one conflict with you. Uh. <laughs> right, Matthew 18, 15 to 22. Uh, let's go through that scriptures. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you and you have gained your brother. If he hears you, that means if he listens to you, that means you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth uh, or two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like the heathen and the tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that you that they ask, it will be done for them by the by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but to 70 times seven. Okay, you start multiplying now, okay, 70 times seven. No. So, um, conflicts is a very real thing in ministry. Uh, I'm sure that you all have had conflicts within this room itself. Okay, Sri Radha. So. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> okay, uh, it, it's a it's a very real thing, and especially if 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 any, anywhere people are involved, and let's just talk about the church itself, um, there will be conflicts, and if and within the church, they say there are teams. Um, you know, let's say worship team. Uh, there will be conflicts uh, between individuals members, right? But, we can't help it. We cannot avoid it, um, right? Because anywhere people are involved, um, it's there will be conflicts, right? So as pastor or a leader, people will come to you with problems among themselves. Um, so one of the ways that how how would you resolve? What what would, what is your first uh, step towards? How would you resolve a conflict? Two people come to you. Anyone? You hear both the sides of the story, okay? That's what by hearing both the sides of the story, okay? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. You need to ask them that if they really want to resolve the conflict or continue as enemies. Just leave it. Oh. Okay. Right. I think. I mean, the initial response, sure, we are, they come together, they meet with us as a pastor or as a leader, with you as a pastor or as a leader, and uh, your in, your immediate response is, okay, how can I help in this, both the individuals to forgive and reconcile? That's what we strive for, isn't it? Uh, some of the most... Now, uh, few of the most dangerous people I have met are the are the are those ones with bitterness who harbor bitterness, bitter people? Uh, I'm not kidding, and uh, you're looking at one. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I'm. It's true. Is it, it, one of the persons that uh, I just yes, mentioned sir. is definitely me, who lived with uh, harbored bitterness for a long time, and. So once you are, it's it's a, it's like an infection, like like a disease. It starts to spread. It captures one place in your heart, and it just spreads. Like you know, it just spreads. What happens is the way you look at life after that will change. The perspective, everything you look at, you understand uh, of every any individual will be through the lens of bitterness. And it's oh, and I'm telling you this, sharing this to you with experience, right? Because I've been there and I know how much it's affected my life. Not just my life, but people around me. me. I mean, it's the source, right? It's right there. First, it, it affects you, it changes you. Uh, and then you come to a point where you cannot identify yourself. Like, you know, if there's enough grace, you'll say, okay, is this really me looking at the mirror? Because you'll know, okay, I was not like this. 
uh, right? And then uh, you can other again, like James says, it's like a, a person who looks into the mirror and walks back. Right. So you have that opportunity to that change. That you want to pursue continuing that, or do you want to change? Right. So, um, yeah, and. and and I'm saying dangerous because uh, I know that because I was offering that. And the person who is bitter, the person is always right. And the person is always right. So I can bend over backwards to justify their case. Uh, is, um, you know what I'm saying, right? So this Matthew verse, it started off by saying, if your brother hears you, uh, okay, let's just so yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, it's fine now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, conflicts uh, in in. Uh, so, we're leading worship ministry, right? So. Um, and there's this one individual that I had to deal with um, who would take offense for everything against anyone in the team, right? Uh, it's it's almost like that person always felt that uh, everybody who came to church that Sunday morning woke up just to come and criticize this person. You get what I'm saying? So have you been around a, any individuals where you feel like, okay, I have to, it's like walking around broken glasses, right? So you are careful, like, and not, I'm saying it's an uncomfortable careful, right? It's like, okay, anything I do or say might just set this time bomb off kind of a thing, right? Um, it's, and now see, people are going to be people. And what I had to tell this person is this, and I said, you have to believe and know that nobody is waking up that morning, coming up to you just to be rude to you. Yeah, and, and that, because, and uh, that I think helped that person in, in a way that started changing the perspective. And the uh, person said, is like, yeah, okay, you know, I understand because. Sometimes it can be frustrating, especially let's say, for example, in a music band, in a in a music team, that uh, you want everybody to have a similar chemistry. Like if I'm the worship leader, I want everybody in my team to understand me and follow me well. Like understand my cues. Uh, if I lift my guitar, stop the song. Uh, you should know when to pull the song, what to play, when to play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If someone does not do something like that, uh, I, I will tell them to do that. But then I don't let it just grow into some kind of a bitterness thing. They're like, okay, if this prince is not stopping or not playing the guitar properly simply because he does not like me. You see the difference? Okay, this person is deliberately playing wrong chords uh, because he doesn't like me and he wants to make me look bad. You see my understanding? And how just bitterness can change everything? Right? From what can be as a skill developmental opportunity, it's become very personal now. following right so it's uh it's like the classic hey it's not personal or it's professional it's work you know it's <laughs> so in all things that you know we need to believe and um offense uh there's this book by uh it's called the bait of satan by uh john baby uh and you know you should read that book if you can also please read the apc publication called uh, no offense, offenses don't take them. Yeah, because the like that's like the seed uh, of bitterness. You know, offend taking offended. Sure, I mean we are again people. You know, we can't live in denial. You get offended, you get upset. Uh, how you respond to that matters. 
right? How you respond to that matters, right? Uh, I mean, trust me, as uh, pastors and leaders, the amount of emails that we get, uh, you know, about <laughs> It's 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 amazing, but it's very easy to be upset, and that upset leading to offense, and that offense leading to a hatred towards that individual. It's very easy, and I'm saying that right. And I'm this is very important, guys, ministers, leaders, pastors, future leaders, whatever. It's very important to guard your heart. Bible says, guard your heart, isn't it? Um, you know. Guard. It's 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 like it's a language used there of a security thing. Who do you guard? Something that is weak. We guard our children, isn't it? You are in a dangerous zone. You stand in front of them so that they say if someone is playing football, you stand in front of them. You put them back so the ball doesn't hit them. Yes or no? It's your, what are you doing? You're guarding, isn't it? And Bible says guard your heart with such uh, cautiousness. Again, the gospel says with every evil thing comes from the heart. Everything. Everything comes from the heart. Right? And it's the same heart Jesus wants. With the king of my heart. You know, we sing all that songs very nicely. But um, how's search me and know me and see if there's any wicked ways in me. Uh, right, it's very easy for us to get offended, but then immediately you ask for his grace to deal with that matter, and you surrender, and you kind of try and resolve the conflict. Or even anyone who comes to you, you, I think you, you push them, encourage them to work towards forgiveness and reconciliation, because the opposite of forgiveness is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness leads to bitterness, and bitterness eventually leads to the destruction of yourself. That's why you uh, ask them to embrace forgiveness and reconciliation, not because it's just a nice idea. Right? Uh, are you all with me? Right? Okay. So, and I'm not. I'm not trying. I, I'm not going to give you a certain examples or just talk about a couple of points. Okay. If this conflict comes, react like this. Because again, in ministry, there will you will come across different kinds of conflicts, various kinds of problems, etc., etc., right? And so um, there's some guidance here. It says, if possible or necessary, have a team of one or more leaders uh, or a team of people qualified. That means if, if a situation is getting out of hand, if a situation is getting out of hand, if a situation is getting escalated, uh, if possible, a leader should have a team or elders, uh, just as witness, uh, and uh, be able to guide. Uh, in the multitudes of counsel, there's wisdom, the Bible says, right? Proverbs. So make it clear that all decisions will be made without any partiality. Um, it's very important, again. Um, OK, so uh, it is possible that, I mean, any two individuals might feel that a leadership is biased towards a certain individual for various reasons. But so at the very start of you guys understand what partiality is? Favoring one person or one side, regardless of what the other story is. Yes? And so again, uh, your character, your character and integrity uh, as a leader will be tested on that. Okay, standards are standards, moral standards, right? Right is right, wrong is wrong, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very important that you make that very clear to the person that you're uh, dealing with is that you are not partial, right? And finally, uh, one, this is very important. Put everything down in writing. Okay, put everything down in writing. Um, so you're in person here. Okay, we've just resolved a conflict. Uh, she helped, uh, Ravali has helped uh, resolve a conflict between me and Anand. And we've shook our hands and all of that. But then you go back and you know you respond with an email saying, okay, we're glad we did this. Uh, you know, we, there's some exhortation thing saying, okay, this is what it is. Um, it's, it's very important, right? Um, it's, it's a sense of professionalism as well. Right. Uh, again, in ministry, this is a problem with the church in India. Is that we, there's no balance. If you think we, if you say that we are in ministry, nothing has to be organized. 
because it's ministry you no know, we'll, <laughs> right uh, one of the things that at least what we follow in apc is um, so let's say i'm planning for a worship team retreat i would have verbally spoken with pastor ashish saying that uh, pastor this is the venue uh, this is how much it's going to cost uh, and uh, pastor ashish will say okay roshan go ahead right he's given a verbal approval <laughs> but that is not enough for the accounts team so i have to go back to my computer draft an email saying okay this is the estimated expenses for the travel bus accommodation venue porter transporting all of that stationery copy uh, photocopy expenses all of that and say okay estimated expense might be 50000 rupees uh, and then send it to the accounts team copying past ashish because he's my boss <laughs> Uh, and you know and so then approval comes so everything is in writing that's the point right it's not just okay let's shake our hands and uh, go ahead are you all with me right um so resolving conflicts uh and bringing correction i think i think is another important thing you have to correct individuals when you see that they need to be corrected if you are a leader and you say okay my character is uh, i don't like correcting people you can't be a leader you cannot be a leader that's one thing so uh, one of the traits of the leader is that you have to correct people you correcting in love and all of that is there but <laughs> right but you have to bring about correction it's up to the other person if they want to be corrected now Are you with me? If they are spiritually mature, they would they are open to be corrected, isn't it? Like I mean, every great athlete has a coach. Why? A coach corrects them. If Roger Federer says, "Is like, hey, why do you? I know how to, you know, hit a forehand smash. You don't have to teach me." That means he wouldn't be the greatest player. Are you with me? Right? It stops you from growing as a champion, right? So that's one thing. As a leader, you cannot ignore correcting people. If something is wrong, you have to correct. You attend. You know, you address that mistake. Second thing, what you most of the times why leaders don't correct people is they think, oh, if I correct them, they will feel bad. I'm sparing them of the embarrassment. Are you with me? You will be in the situation if you have not already been in the situation. Mark my words. you will say okay let me not correct them because i'm if i correct them that person might leave the team that person might leave the church that person might leave the country also and go types <laughs> okay you are thinking as a leader that you are sparing that person but in all actuality you are sparing yourself and that's a very selfish thing so when you don't correct an individual you are being very selfish did you know that because you want to continue to look good in that person's eye because your fear is if you correct that person can you think okay that person is going to start looking at me very differently yeah but a person who appreciates healthy relationship if a person actually values you will receive that correction and know that you what your intention is behind it Are you with me? So, any time, one more th thing is another very important part, a mark of a leader is that if you're correcting people, you have to make it very clear in a way. Sometimes you can't say it in a way that you, the other person that you're correcting, needs to know that you are for them. Right? You are correcting them for their well-being. You are not; they are not doing any favor. <laughs> right? They need to know that. you are doing whatever you are doing for their well being for their good it's like literally like a parent and a child's relationship isn't it uh my son likes to stand behind me and just watch me shave are you with me and if given a chance he would imitate me using that razor but what is a blessing for me now can be a curse for him because he doesn't know how to handle the razor blade isn't it and so it is my duty to correct and say okay it's not safe don't touch it get what i'm saying right if i just see him playing with the razor thing and uh, and don't care that means i really means i don't care about okay go cut yourself 
go fall. I don't care. Are you following? Right? Um, so there's a lot of beauty in relationships. Uh, you know, there's a lot of beauty in valuing people in a sense that um, you, you, you must be willing to see the, the gold through all the ugliness. And you have to be ready to walk through that. Uh, and it's not just um, we're talking about you know Exodus uh, I think Exodus or Deuteronomy it says uh, Moses sat on all day from morning of the rising of the sun to the evening and sat through and listened to all the pop people's problems my god uh, boy that, praise God for counselors so Please go for professional help. Because <laughs> okay. uh, counseling is hard. Uh, but anyways, right? Uh, please go through that chapter. There's a lot of points there about correcting people and all the different uh, points that addresses that uh, in this chapter, especially, right? Um, now, the, you will also receive emails. What will happen is that uh, now say I'm the pastor of a church and uh, say any, any one of you have been a major leader and have uh, been part of the controversial news. Okay, so something some something you might, might must have done must have irritated some person in another part of the world and uh, and they will send an email to me saying uh, why because I would have stood by that person uh, you know, given that person a platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The person will say, "How can you stand with that person when that person has fallen and and you know do all these things, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Now, are you guys? This is very important. Are you with me, right? So I have a personal relationship with Prince. I have walked with him. I know who he is. Etc. Right. I know how he treats people, and so if I receive an email, say for some controversial thing unnecessarily, uh, condemning not just him but also me, saying how can you agree and walk with a person and have a relationship with a person like Prince? How do you stand? It's also very important, right? And and a, a scenario like this has happened in the real world, and I want to read an email response of one person who responded to a person uh, who wrote an email in a similar similar scenario, saying condemning an individual that they based on what they have heard. Okay. Uh, and so this person uh, wrote, this person as in a uh, person who is standing with the person who's fallen, uh, who's been accused, uh, wrote saying, have you spent time with so-and-so? Uh, For example, I'm going to use Prince's name. So. <laughs> so have you spent time with uh, XYZ? Do you know him? Have you watched him with his wife? Have you seen him treat his kids? Have you spent any time with his staff? Have you been to his ministry? Has he been to yours? Have you laid hands on him and prayed? Has he laid hands on you and prayed? Have you grieved over tragedy together? Have you celebrated victory together? Has he sought your counsel? Has he traveled great distance just to be with you for advice? Have you ever received his counsel? Have you ever been in a room when God shows up on him and used him in a stunning ways? Have you seen him operate in a word of knowledge and in the prophetic? Have you benefited from his gift in ministry? Has he benefited from your gift in ministry? Has he ever honored you for who you are in God? Has he partnered with you as a friend? Have you sought God with him? Have you ever worshipped the Lord with him? I didn't think so. I have. He is my friend. And more importantly, God calls him friend. And if you and I were friends at that level, and people hated you and turned against you, started web pages to turn down your ministry, criticized you at your, to your friends, magazines, and in the radio, I'd still be your friend. Oh, that's uh, it. It's friends, wisdom, spiritual maturity, grace. So many things in that email. Uh, yeah, it was just. And so all of this will happen in ministry. 
in in every area of town we need uh, uh, his wisdom isn't it yeah 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 so when somebody came up with a an accusation or an allegation uh, against the person you know uh, so yeah this response is right absolutely but uh, what would be our on our part do we also check with that person right like if what is exactly happened if they have done yeah. something that needs to be addressed absolutely um, that needs to be corrected absolutely yeah has to be corrected mm -hmm. has to be addressed anything like it uh, anything in nature if, if it's doctrinal theological uh, and uh, based character integrity etc anything that you see and that's a mark of a true friend isn't it uh, see what is the difference between uh, conviction and condemnation <laughs> different Francis yeah so my question is very simple though is what is the difference between conviction and con uh, condemnation Francis Mm. I mean, there is a factor of love that will be there in conviction when you're yeah. talking, and that misses when you're condemning the other Correct. Person. True. So, um, one one of the scenarios that comes to my mind is uh, Prophet Nathan and David. Right, Prophet Nathan and David. That is after he has uh, sinned against uh, with with Bathsheba. You know, ordered the murder of uh, the husband Uriah. What's his name? Uriah, right? Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Long story short, condemnation points to your identity. To you. It, it it hurts it, it it touches your identity it condemns you versus the conviction will address the event that has happened are you with me so nathan didn't go and say that okay you are so and so you are so and so he was addressing the event that happened that leads that leads to conviction, isn't it? And so again, it's very important when you're correcting people, you don't condemn them, right? You don't uh, you don't touch their identity as leaders, right? You talk about the event. This happened, right? Um, so that's it's it's a big thing in in the world of identity. Uh, go on, go. On. Is uh, so once we understand that as individuals and as leaders, it will change our lives. Why? Why I say that again is um, so. For example, for the longest time, just because I failed in my twelfth standard, I, I believe I believed that I was a failure. Uh, what helped me in counseling was I was made to understand that my failure in twelfth standard in mathematics is not who I am, but that's an event that happened. So once you realize that's just an event, then there's more things to life, you'll come out of it. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so that's how you kind of correct, uh, is you address it, regardless of what. Okay, so this is a wonderful chapter uh, that I would like you for you all to, uh, you know, go through. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, I think with that, we kind of conclude this course. Uh, the meat of this course is section one and section two. Section one is all about the origins, God's idea for the church, right? Uh, it all starts with Matthew 16, I think, where, who do you say I am? Jesus asking that question. And if you remember that first class, we spoke about uh, the geographical significance of where Jesus asks that question, um, right? And, and then from there on, we go just deeper into God's idea. And we saw diff 10 different perspectives facets of the church, the way that he looks at. 
and uh, and then everything else uh, it's a little practical and as i mentioned section uh, 4 and section 5 will be covered in the other courses next year in church and church and ministry administration and uh, urban church planting even yeah okay uh, so well uh, thank you for joining this course i uh, hope that this has been helpful um and and again just go through we've covered most of the content in the uh, in the book uh, the house of god um so go through the remainder of the chapters uh, in your assessments uh, final assessments uh, this is, i'm also talking to those doing who will be joining doing the e learning courses um, it's your assessment will be an open book uh, quiz so to speak yeah it's an open book quiz so i think complicated uh, i would uh, i would i would have asked questions outside of from the other chapters as well from the book so it's it's an open book quiz okay so it's, it's not that challenging so <laughs> okay but i hope it's been helpful i hope you've learned something from this course uh, thank you for being patient thank you for joining in uh, god bless you i will see you around take care thank you <laughs>